Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to 3D model the wallet holder from my previous video. Organizing my home with 3D printing. I know that there are a lot of you out there that feel intimidated to learn a 3D modeling software. So in order to help those of you that are interested in learning Fusion 360, I decided to make this beginner tutorial. So let's begin. When starting, make sure that the solid tab is selected. Another thing you should know is that you can rotate the viewpoint of your workspace by clicking and holding your mouse wheel and moving the mouse around. And you can zoom in and out of an area by moving your mouse cursor to the area and rotating your mouse wheel. In order to begin the modeling process, we need measurements of the railing that we're going to be modeling the wallet holder around. Here is the photo of the side profile of my railing for you to pause and take a screenshot of now. You are more than welcome to take measurements of your own railing and insert your measurements instead of copying mine. But if you are only here for the tutorial, you can copy my measurements exactly. Next, we're going to import the image into the Fusion workspace. So click on the Create Sketch button and select the side plane to sketch on. Then select the Sketch Square button. Select the option that allows you to draw a square from the center out. Then click on this dot, which is the origin point, and draw the square from there. Then select the dimension tool. Select the top line of the square and set the dimension to the width that is the top measurement of the railing. Then select the side line and assign it this dimension. Notice that the sketch is visible right now. For future reference, if the sketch you want to use is not visible, you can toggle its visibility on and off by selecting the eye icon next to it from the sketches drop down menu. Next, click on the canvas button. Then click insert from my computer and select the photo or screenshot of the railing profile. Then click on the side plane for the face to insert the image onto. Next you will notice this contraption. This is the transform and scale icon. Use the transform and scale icon to move and scale the image so that the size of the top square of the railing matches the dimension sketch that we just made. Next, we're going to sketch the base profile of the wallet holder. Select the Create Sketch option and P on your keyboard to bring up the Project Sketch dialog box. Select the Construction option on the Sketch Palette dialog box. Then click on the square that we created in the previous sketch. This will project it into the current sketch as construction lines. Next, select the line tool and then draw this profile around the construction lines of the square we projected. Most of the time Fusion helps you automatically draw perfectly horizontal and vertical lines and you can see this when it looks like this or when a perpendicular constraint is automatically added, as shown by this square in the corner. If Fusion didn't automatically make them perfectly horizontal or vertical, you can give them that constraint by selecting this tool and then clicking the lines. An error message may pop up in the bottom right corner saying that the sketch is over constrained, and that's probably because that constraint is already assigned to that line. 
Next, select the dimension tool and add the following dimensions to each of the lines. At this point, if you're using your own dimensions to match your railing, you can add them where applicable instead of copying my dimensions. As you can see, I've made the gap between where the wallet holder's profile surrounds the railing 0.2 millimeters. This is to ensure that it will easily slide onto the railing after I print it without scratching the paint off the railing. Once all the dimensions have successfully been added, select finish sketch. Next, click on the extrude button and select the profile that we just sketched. Select the option to extrude from both sides symmetrically and set the thickness of the extrusion to 130 millimeters. Select one of the side faces of the body we just extruded and then select create sketch. Then bring up the project sketch dialog by clicking P on your keyboard. Then select these edges to project a sketch. Then draw a line to close the sketch profile like this. Then click finish sketch and select the extrude tool. Select the sketch profile that you just drew and then extrude it by minus 5 millimeters. Make sure that join is selected in the drop down menu. Click on the create drop down menu and select mirror. Choose feature as the object that you'd like to mirror. Then click on the little extrusion icon that we just made in the bottom timeline bar. Then choose the center side face as the one to mirror the feature across. Now that you have the entire body modeled, it's time to round out the edges of the design with the fillet tool. Select the fillet tool. Select these inner edges and give them the following fillet amount. Continue to use the fillet tool to round out the rest of the body's edges as seen here. Next, we're going to assign the model an appearance. Select the A key on your keyboard. This will bring up the appearance dialog box. Scroll down to the appearance that you'd like to assign to your wallet holder. Then click and drag it onto your wallet holder. And there you have it. 
Congratulations for completing this tutorial. Anyway guys, I hope you found this helpful and informative. If you did, please comment, like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!